All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Christopher Locke. I'm the IBPA Director of Membership and Member Services. And this is your Get to Know Your IBPA Member Benefits webinar series. Today, I'm very excited. We're going to be highlighting the Edelweiss Member Benefit. And I am happy to welcome Senior Client Success Manager, Allison Langlois. Hello, Allison. Hi. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. And um, just a shout out to my colleague, Shana Mailer, that will be um, helping answer some questions in the Q&A. She's a fellow client success member as well. Um, but yeah, thanks for having me. Um, today, I'm just hoping to walk you through like a brief overview of what Edelweiss is and give you more context into uh, how you could increase your book discoverability using some of the tools on Edelweiss as a publisher. Uh, also hoping to just give you ideas for, there's a lot of different ways to use Edelweiss, kind of depending on your goals and situation. So hope to give you a good um, kind of overview of all of your options. Also, there's a very large chance that my dog will make an appearance at some point. So just <laughs> if you hear some barking, that's why. Um, yeah, so jumping into it today, we'll start with what Edelweiss is and then move into different options for you as a publisher, where I hope, again, that you'll see that there's lots of different avenues for you to take, depending on your goals and ability and team size and all of that. Um, and then last, I'm going to walk you through some marketing options um, and how you might engage with those. They're kind of a great fit depending on your size as a publisher. There's something there a little bit for everyone. So I thought that might be helpful. Um, again, reminder when we go over that, that that's what the promo code will be for is 20% off a newsletter banner of your choice. So what is Edelweiss? Um, this is something we find that a lot of people can be a little confused about. So I always try to like give as much information as possible. We're a small company um, started by the son of a bookseller and the grandson of a librarian. Uh, we used to be based in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but we went remote over the pandemic. So now we have employees kind of all across the U.S. as well as a dedicated team in the U.K. Uh, we're made up of a large audience of booksellers, librarians, reviewers, consumers, and as you can see, publishers and sales reps as well. Um Folks use us for a wide variety of functions, but really the main ones include title discovery, so looking for new titles, ordering and inventory management, downloading digital review copies, uh, reviewing titles and establishing communities of peers, decision support and analytics, and then of course the publisher and publisher sales and marketing. Um, any specific questions on what Edelweiss is before we move on? I always like to ask because it just helps to um, be clear on that. Can, can I uh, jump in real quick? Because this is something people ask about. They get their books on, let's say they post it to Ingram Spark. Does your book automatically populate to Edelweiss if you upload your book to something like Edelweiss? No. Okay, great. No, no. Um, that's kind of like either you can work through and we'll like go over this a bit more, but you can work with a distributor and depending on what that like distributor offers for you, like if they do sales and marketing, maybe part of their features would be that they're including your title on Edelweiss for you um, as part of that. So like, you know, if you're a independent publishers group, distributed publisher, they may add your titles for you. Um onto the site and things. But a lot of times, uh, if you're not working with a distributor, just being like with Ingram or working with Ingram Spark doesn't mean it's automatically going to be on Edelweiss, especially if you're handling your own sales and marketing. Awesome. And Shana, I don't know if you want to jump on. There are a ton of other questions. Yeah. But yeah We've got a, a lot of questions um, here. I'm trying to sort through to see what might be best to answer now. And there's some of these that I think will be answered as we go yeah. through here. Um, one thing on how we're different than NetGalley, Allison, I think you're going to talk about, about review copies. So maybe that'll give people some information on that. Um, how much does it cost to get your books on Edelweiss? I don't think we're going over specifics on pricing today, but Allison, do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, I will talk about like, 
because I think especially for, you know, you guys being independent publishers in a lot of ways, like, you know, getting to weigh your options of where you're spending your money and it was very difficult. Um, so we will talk about pricing for like the different services and that. So I might just move ahead and looking at these questions. I saw someone ask about sales reps. Yes, we have like tons of sales reps on Edelweiss because the main functionality um, would be that publishers are adding their digital catalogs to the site and then their sales teams or maybe outside sales reps are going in and marking up those catalogs and sharing them with um, independent bookstores or whoever you're selling to. So we have tons of sales reps using the site um, and it is one of the main functions. So I might just jump ahead because I think we'll cover a lot of this stuff. And if we don't, I'll make sure we have a little time at the end too. Um, so the first thing I really wanted to talk about um, was catalog services. Publishers and all other user groups are welcome to sign up for free accounts that allow you to browse the platform and you can even create collections of your titles. Uh, collections differ from catalogs in that they aren't publicly viewable and can only be seen by who you share them with. So like I can go in as just like a reader and make a collection of like all the titles that I want to buy for my family for this upcoming holiday. And I can pull from like multiple publishers, whereas catalogs are something where we're receiving data from you and you're creating a publicly viewable and findable, you know, collection or catalog of titles. Um, catalog subscriptions are really the main product utilized by publishers on Edelweiss. Having a catalog subscription gives you your own page where you can add your own branding and create catalogs. And it also is gonna open you up to tons of sales and marketing tools. Uh, some of the main advantages of having a catalog subscription include allowing your titles to be discovered on the platform. Um, like you just kind of saw, we have lots of librarians and booksellers and reviewers, um, as well as consumers that use Edelweiss specifically just to identify new titles. Um, it's also one of the main places that you can include really comprehensive title data. And I'll actually give you a little more examples on like all the kind of title data you can include on the next slide. Um, having your titles on Edelweiss opens you up to the ability to have the power of the indies behind you. Uh, Edelweiss is the preferred method of front list ordering for booksellers. Um, they Booksellers also have a tool called 360 that allows them to create email campaigns for their customer lists using titles listed on the site. So having your titles on the site just allows for getting to work with the indies in various ways. Um, as I mentioned before, it opens you up to a world of sales and marketing tools as well for you to utilize. Uh, some of the big ones to be aware of include our markup feature that allows your sales teams to mark up your catalogs with like account specific notes and things and share those with specific buyers. You can also load contacts and receive and export orders from those contacts for fulfillment. Um, you can create showcases within catalogs, info pages for people to reference with like your ordering information, event grids of touring authors for booksellers to reference and utilize our advertising, which we'll cover a bit more. So here, I just wanted to give you an impression of um, some of the different information fields that you can add on Edelweiss. Internal images are excellent for showing off picture heavy books. So children's books, cookbooks, graphic novels, they're a great way to kind of give a potential buyer a peek inside and see, you know, what the book looks like. Uh, comp titles or comparable titles are a necessary tool for booksellers or librarians to use when making buying decisions. Um, you can also include your marketing plans, notable quotes and reviews, author bios, even embed videos um, like book trailers and include as many links as you like to things like author websites, sell sheets, giveaways, um, things like that. So the ability to include so much title information is just an important thing to be aware of when considering Edelweiss as like a tool to use in your sales and marketing practices. Hope that makes sense. 
Um, so how do you know if a catalog subscription is right for you? We put together a small checklist in helping make this decision. The first one would be, do you have an established Onyx feed for your titles? Uh, the first step after sign up is us ingesting your title data. So we require Onyx feeds, but there's also um, an option to manually add your title information. If you have a smaller title count, um, it can just get, it's always like to note that can get a little time consuming to keep up to date. So just something to keep in mind if you need to do it manually. Um, do you have a dedicated sales team or a group of established buyer contacts? Um, though lots of users utilize Edelweiss for title discovery, you get the most ROI out of using Edelweiss if you have an established sales team using the platform to actively sell your titles for you. Um, you can't receive orders on Edelweiss unless you have an account added as a contact. So this can really be a significant barrier for small presses. Um, if you don't have a established sales team. Bandwidth, um, do you have the manpower and time to take on catalog creation, managing of marketing resources and proactive sales and outreach and order placing? Just something to think about and consider. And then last but not least, of course, budget. Catalog subscriptions are based on title count. They start at an annual subscription fee of $3,000. IBPA members do receive a 15% discount on this with a starting price at $2,300 on these subscriptions. Um, so all of these are just really important things to weigh when you're thinking through, um, you know, if a catalog subscription is right for you. I know I'm saying a lot of information, so don't worry. I promise hopefully this will all make sense together, but you have options. So say you're like, okay, I just read that checklist and like, you know, we do not have an established data feed. We don't have a sales team. Um, you do have options. So if you really don't have the manpower um, or time to take on the expense of a catalog subscription and make it worth it, you can work with a distributor who can manage your title data for you, catalog your titles in their account on Edelweiss and utilize their established sales teams to sell to their already kind of known and established contacts. You can also opt to do review copies or marketing on the platform only. Um, catalog subscriptions are not required for all marketing options and review copies can make a really nice fit when it comes to starting to grow your contact lists um, and build up reviews for your titles along with just starting relationships with buyers in general. Now, I don't want to bog you down with too much information, but I also wanted to just make sure you were aware of kind of all of the options available to you as a publisher. So if you do decide that a catalog subscription is right for you, these are all um, additional services that can be added on to take your usage kind of to the next level. We have designer, which is something that allows you to create custom templates that you can export in various formats for really beautifully designed catalogs or presentations. Um, we have a lot of like publishers using designer to create their actual like print catalogs and things because they're already using the data that's in Edelweiss, but then using the design tools and designer to make it look really nice and ready for print. Um, analytics is a powerful sales tool that gives you reporting on how your titles are doing across the 600 or so stores that we receive um, sales data from. And then 360 is a direct sales and marketing tool that gives you the ability to reach out to relevant contacts and monitor those interacting with your titles. So a lot of these services are available to distributed publishers as well at discounted pricing. So always feel free to reach out and we can elaborate more on like your options for your specific um, case and pricing based on that experience. Okay, so that's catalogs overall. Um, jumping a little bit into review copies, um, they're a really good option no matter the size of your press, which is kind of nice with review copies. You don't have to have a catalog subscription to offer review copies on Edelweiss. You can offer 
digital versions, um, usually like a PDF or EPUB file, along with audio review copies, if you'd like to share an audiobook version as well. Um, you can control access settings, so whether you'd like to make your titles available for immediate download from users or require approval, and we apply uh, DRM privacy settings to each upload so the files can't be shared and include, um, you can add your own expiration date that you're setting as well for after files download, the, if they expire after 30 days, etc. Uh, I really like review copies for publishers who are working with a distributor or who a catalog subscription isn't a good fit for because it allows you to start building some connections of your own with booksellers. You can have access to all the activity information for your titles. So you'll actually get like names and email addresses of everyone who's downloading your review copies so you can you know, make sure you reach out afterwards and say, hey, like, thanks for downloading our title. Um, here's how you're going to order from us if you need to, or maybe start a direct sales relationship with them if that's something you'd like to do. Um, and then, of course, you can also use those contacts to just beef up your own marketing list for future titles. Pricing for this, um, there is a $500 setup fee, and that's only for those who are not on Edelweiss already, either via distributor or your own listing. Um, there is a $105 annual subscription fee, and then it's just $55 per upload that you add as a review copy. And there's no additional fees per download or anything. You can actually also update file uh, versions along the way. Sometimes people will have like a really early one that they want to add in ahead of time, and then they may have like a more finalized version of the title that they want to offer as a review copy as time goes on. Um, I also wanted to just note that we launched our own web-based digital reader last year, and this has really increased the number of general title downloads that review copies are receiving. The reader eliminated a lot of barriers of downloading um, review copies because people would have to go through third-party apps to actually maybe read a, a title and things like that. With the reader, you can just simply open your title in a, in a web browser as soon as you're given access. Um, it also includes some improved security functions and additional features for readers like the ability to zoom and bookmark and it auto returns to your place in the book. Um, it's been particularly helpful for image heavy publishers. So graphic novels, children's books as well, because a lot of those third party apps like Kindle and things, the file sizes are generally too large and maybe not super compatible with some of those readers, um, whereas it works pretty well for the Edelweiss reader. So just good to know, I guess, that you'll automatically, if you upload a review copy, we automatically create um, reader as an option for someone to, hey, they could say, I want to read it on my Kindle or I want to open it in the web browser, et cetera. Okay. So I hope that makes sense with review copies as well. Um, jumping into talking about some of the advertising options. Um, so I know, yeah, I hope you're getting a clearer view, I guess, of, of, you know, your options to engage with Edelweiss. Um, I wanted to share just some information on why you might want to advertise with us, especially because like I said, I think advertising is something nice that you can take advantage of like this big audience that we have if maybe it doesn't make sense for you to have a catalog subscription at this time etc um we're really kind of the central hub for the book industry we've got a large mix of booksellers librarians uh, reviewers readers and publishers all actively using the site to market sell and discover and order new titles our platform has over 1 million page views per day, and our newsletters boast just higher than average industry rates, um, open rates for the industry, and include varying types and sizes. We've got everything from genre-specific lists to user-specific lists, and then we also have some verified professional communities, um, such as like an ABA member community, library reads, and Barnes & Noble. 
Um, first kind of ad options for you to be aware of are all of our newsletter banners. So I'll start with the weekly greeting. We have a weekly greeting newsletter that goes out every Monday and lists all of the new catalogs and review copies from the week prior, as well as what titles are pubbing um, this upcoming week. This newsletter has our largest su subscriber number, around 100,000 subscribers and an average 30% open rate. Um, banner options include, we have a, just a top banner for this newsletter, but then we also have little section header banners that are genre specific. So with those, there's a adult nonfiction, children's and YA banner. Um, so in addition to weekly greeting, we've got bookseller and librarian newsletters. They go out once a month to those audiences. And these are tend to be a great fit for targeting specific user groups. Like if you wanna get something in front of just booksellers or just librarians, um, they tend to communicate need to know updates for these specific user groups, which I think is why they have that pretty high 30 to 40% open rate as well. Um, in those, you can choose from a top, middle, or footer banner. And then last but not least, we have professional community newsletters. Um, so we've got an ABA, a Barnes & Noble, and a Library Reads. These go out either once a month or every other month and also communicate some need-to-know information for folks within those professional communities on Edelweiss. Uh, those are all validated communities, which is something good to be aware of too. You have to actually like enter an ABA um, member code to be joining, to join their community. And you have to actually be a buyer with Barnes and Noble, et cetera. So they are kind of run by those organizations. Um, they have a 35 to 40% average open rate. Um, and they also include banner options. So they have a top middle and footer, but they also have author spotlights and featured reviews where you can highlight an author of a title or a title review to those audiences. Um, we've been doing some deep diving on just our ad performance overall. And we found that top banners and newsletters tend to be the top performers and have the highest click-through rates. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, in general, all banners can be GIFs and have the ability to link anywhere you'd like. Some publishers will use banners to highlight like a collection of titles or maybe a new catalog, um, while others will just simply promote um, a title. And then, yeah, and so this is just what to be aware of um, as far as a discount for IBPA members that we're offering with the webinar. Those are the ones that you'd have 20% off. Um, then switching gears a little bit to just some insight advertising options. So title banner inserts, they're probably our most popular ad option. They are a banner that lives above your title anywhere it's listed on Edelweiss. Um, they can be swapped out anytime for no additional charges. It's really a great place to communicate in the next nomination deadlines or promote downloading of your review copies. Uh, we've gotten some really good feedback from booksellers that seeing a banner when browsing a catalog lets them know the publisher is prioritizing a title. Um, featured titles, they include a featured spot in our weekly greeting newsletter and at the top of the review copies page in Edelweiss for that week. Uh, they require no artwork. We automatically pull just your cover, cover image and details from the site when you book these. They pair nicely with review copies because of their inclusion in the weekly greeting newsletter where folks are kind of already looking for new titles, um, and of course, because of their placement at the top of the review copies tab. Uh, engagements, they're a relatively new ad option for us, but with these, you can actually create your own pop-up on the Edelweiss homepage and choose your target audience. Only one of these runs at a time, so you're not really competing with anything, and it's a great way to utilize kind of the busyness of the site to get your message out there. Um, another little pro tip on this one is that um, we found that featured titles can be extra clicky. So 85% appear in the 10 most clicked titles for that week's given newsletter. 
just reinforcing that the value that that ad option provides. Um, to take it back a step too, I want to make sure I noted like newsletter banners and things. You do not need to be, your titles don't need to be on Edelweiss or anything like that for you to take advantage of using these. For title banner inserts and featured titles, obviously, of course, your title needs to be on the site because for this one, we're pulling your title information. And for title banners, it lives above your title in Edelweiss. Engagements, you can still do those as well if you're not on Edelweiss. I wanted to give you some examples of what other publishers are doing and just a general shout out too for always like feel free to look at what other publishers are doing on Edelweiss. Again, it's a free, you can make a free account anytime and go in and kind of click around. So um, feel free to always like go in and maybe subscribe to specific newsletters and we'll share um, a link on how to do that and things too. But it's just good to see if you're looking for like, you know, the best way to take advantage of things. Our marketing team is also really great at like helping kind of um, talk through what ad option might be the best for you. This top one was just a um, banner in one of our newsletters. And it looks like they just included like a notable quote and linked the title on Edelweiss. Um, both of these are title banner inserts. So like that live above the title on the site. I just wanted you to be able to see this one. They did a really good job, like communicating the call to action is that they want you to request their DRC or their eARC. So they've got that on there. And then this one, they clearly want you to nominate for Indie Next and they're giving you that deadline, which is really helpful. Um, this is just a little idea of what featured titles look like within the, uh, weekly greeting newsletter as well. Uh, our last promo option um, that's kind of its own thing, so I wanted to like give it its own space is um, eBlasts. This is our only promo option that includes your ability to send something out um, to one of our mailing lists that just includes your information. So this is an example here. Um, they created this for us and then we sent it out to a specific email list. These have shown really good stats so far. So generally a 40% open rate and an average 8% click-through rate. You would actually choose with this which mailing list you'd like to communicate your message to. We have, again, everything from like our large weekly greeting list to genre lists and user community lists as well. Um, they're really a great fit if you're looking to target a specific audience and you really want to get your message out there um, on its own. Um, I also wanted to go over our Edelweiss book lists. Um, it's an excellent free option for publishers to bring some extra attention to your titles. So the purpose of book lists um, and the project overall is just to gather titles around designated themes and awareness months, things that can be difficult to identify via just BISAC designations um, to share with booksellers and librarians. So this is like, you know, we may want to pull a list on, um, I think we got a request for like diverse romance titles, including people over the age of 40. So we can open that up to publishers, they can submit it and we can share those links with booksellers. Um, they're timed around buying seasons with the intention of helping stores and librarians make relevant books available to communities in a timely manner. So, um, you know, example, the eco lit list was shared with booksellers and librarians two months ahead of Earth Day so that they could order titles and ship it and have them stocked in their stores before the holiday. And then some topics so far this year have included Ecolit, we did motherhood, um, trans and gender non-conforming voices, still to come. Uh, and I think this actually we've done now, but Spanish language showcase, diverse romance and centering the sidelines. We just updated actually our list of topics for um, the upcoming year and using that little QR code, you can check that out. Publishers can submit up to two titles per imprint for free. 
Um, and then those title lists are actually highlighted on our site in a little pop-up and in the upcoming bookseller and librarian newsletters each month. So far, we've seen that we just typically get around 75 to 100 clicks on each list per newsletter each month. Um, and we also do calls for submission for these are shared in our publisher newsletter. Um, on the next slide, I'm going to give you links to make sure you're subscribed to the newsletters you'd like to receive. Um, but yeah, you can also find that upcoming list of topics at that QR code here. It's really just, this is just something that all publishers should be taking advantage of is if your titles are already listed on Edelweiss or if you're thinking about it or about to do that, it's just a way to get some free extra promotion. Okay. Again, I just want to make give you extra time making sure you're aware of our market marketing options because they're a great complement to work you're already doing on Edelweiss and can also be a great fit for pubs who aren't in a place to engage with the Edelweiss tools but want to take advantage of our large book professional base. Um, here you can find um, a link to subscribe to relevant newsletters. Do not be disturbed if you do not have your phone out and don't have time to scan these. We'll make sure we get those links to you in the follow-up emails too. Um, but I want to make sure you had these specifically because I think getting these newsletters can be really helpful to see what other publishers are doing advertising-wise. Um, and then, of course, the marketing kit is going to have more information on all those ad options that I just went over as well as pricing and things too. Okay. I left us a good amount of time to do some questions. Let's see, I hope that helped and made sense. Let me see what questions we've got left in the chat. Yeah, there are tons. So I'm sure Shana will jump in. There's a lot of questions and uh, we're so glad that we have you here as an expert to answer them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like we're getting some questions. I answered some of them about Ingram, but there was one, does Ingram pull metadata from Edelweiss? And I realized I don't know if I know the answer to that. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, they're not. I mean, granted, we I think a lot of publishers or a lot of different associations and like even review associations and things will go to Edelweiss to pull like cover images and pub dates and isbins and things like that. Um, but in, a, in any sort of like formal capacity, no. If anything, Ingram is actually sending us title information um, for their distributed publishers that they actually handle like distribution for, um, meaning like sales and marketing distribution because they make a catalog and their sales reps go in and um, mark up those catalogs and sell to indie bookstores. And then there's one about that I don't I don't know if we have advice on this, but um the question was what if you're having trouble getting a distributor? Um this person yeah. just is Baker and Taylor. Yeah. That's real. Just just I mean, I'm sure you guys know more than I do, but just that's um something we hear very often. It's just um I think using their sites, I don't have any real tips because I think everybody operates a little bit differently, but you know, reaching out and also maybe just asking for feedback on like why, you know, things like that, if they're looking for more from you so that, you know, you know, maybe where it makes sense to spend time. Um, and then there was another, what's the best way to discuss a tutorial on sales data reporting with booksellers? Um, Best way to discuss a tutorial on sales data reporting. Yeah, I wasn't um, sure quite what. I guess I could take this in a few ways, but like we have um, booksellers, a lot of what uh, most booksellers on the site, um, they, again, they do not need to like pay for any services in order to like do ordering through Edelweiss. It's just kind of the preferred method for front list ordering. Um, but they can pay to have like some of their own inventory management. We have analytics for booksellers, 
Um, and then publishers can actually, with the POS sales data that we're receiving from like those 600 or so reporting stores, publishers and, and sales reps can um, pay to have a subscription for analytics as well, where they can see some of that title information, which I guess I think I'm taking it in the way of like, you know, if you're going to meet with a store to talk about um you know, you as a press or you're trying to sell a title, it can be a really helpful tool to be like, hey, it looks like you guys sell a lot of our mystery and thriller titles. So you'd be a really good fit for this new title we have coming up. Um, so it just gives you kind of more fuel to know as a sales um, in like a sales position, what your you might want to sell to that publisher or to that store and um, kind of build some trust with you as well. Cause they feel like you're getting to know them and what they sell, et cetera. So I hope that answered it. And then one more question was, are indie publishers competing with trade publishing on the site? I don't know if you have thoughts on that, Allison. Really just that. Um, yes. Arian, Arian. Um, just agreeing. Yes. This is kind of like selling direct versus using Ingram. Yeah. This is like a tool for you to sell direct to, um, indie booksellers and then, or offer review copies or do marketing, et cetera. But, um, are indie publishers competing really? I mean, competing, not necessarily it kind of, everyone's on the same bar. So yeah, there's not a way to, um, designate like who's indie who's traditional especially because indie is such a wide range of things um but yeah you'd be like searchable in the same place that penguin random house would be searchable as a publisher um if you had a catalog listing i know we answered some of the questions in the chat but for the video purposes i want to make sure that we answer them in the video um can you clarify the difference between Edelweiss and NetGalley? Yeah. So, I mean, specifically speaking, there's NetGalley is more of a like, um, they are a place for review copies. And that's kind of mainly what they do. And I think they also have maybe a little bit larger of a reviewer type audience than we are. I think ours is a little more book professional audience and review copies is like one of the tools that you can use as a publisher on Edelweiss. So they're, they differ and they're similar in that you can offer review copies in both places, but I think they differ in like who our audiences are that you're offering review copies to. Um, and as well as like just the full spectrum of what we offer. Yep. Yeah. I used to run the IBP and NetGalley program and um, yes, hundred percent. If you want consumer reviews, um, people that book lovers, NetGalley is the place to go. Um, and then they'll leave their reviews on other sites like Amazon and places like that. But um, as Allison was saying, if you want to get into bookstores, um, then Edelweiss is really the place you got to be. Um, can you tell us, uh, you know, we talked a lot about bookstores here, but like, you know, like Target, uh, Walmart, yeah. all those places, like, and even places that are like little gift shops and stuff and non-bookstores. Is that also the case? Yeah, that's what's kind of funny about Edelweiss is like, it's a sales tool for you. So like, we have like we have on the site, we've got target buyers. We've got a lot of the big box store buyers as well. Um, but it, it has so much to do with like how your accounts prefer to, you know, be sold to or, or place orders with you, et cetera. So it's pretty flexible in that, like, and that's why designer can be a cool tool as well. Cause like, say you have some like museum or gift accounts that you usually do like PowerPoint presentations, maybe of like showing your titles off that way. Like, you know, you could use Edelweiss for that as well. Um, that's, I guess I'm rambling, but really just, yes, we have a lot of the big box stores on Edelweiss as well. I think it can be used in so many different ways. Whereas like a lot of stores are going to want the traditional kind of, um, marking up a catalog, sharing that with them, placing an order with you, but maybe like your target store, it's just walking them through, like you sharing your screen and it's still a good place that you have all of that comprehensive title data. 
um, which also gets me thinking about, I think one of the biggest misconceptions, and I want to make sure it was clear about this too, is like, it's not like a site where say I'm a bookstore and I stumble on your catalog. I can't just like place an order with you. Um, it's a sales tool for you to use to sell to your accounts. Um, they could look at your information and contact you after seeing your titles or download a review copy or even review a title, et cetera. Um, but I think that's where we always like want to make sure people are aware. Um, it's almost like having a Facebook page in some ways, like people could maybe find it, but like, it has mostly to do with what you're doing with the catalogs you're creating and the page you've created as well. Um, in terms of the, uh, let's say you do have a distributor, are they the ones like, does the publisher at all then go in to an Adovice account and do anything? Or is then the distributor, the one who hands the whole thing? Every distributor is a little different in like maybe how much they offer to their publisher. So that is a huge, like if you're working with your distributor, I would ask them like, what do you do for us on Adelice? Cause some will actually upload and manage your review copies for you. Um, whereas others are going to say, you need to sign up for that yourself and, and do that yourself. And, and you, again, you do get discounts for being already on the uh, site through a distributor. So something to think about there. Um, but yeah, a lot, I would say the standard is usually that they're doing a lot of it for you, but I think it makes, um, it helps a lot to be familiar with what they're doing so that, you know, Hey, they're not actually doing much marketing of our stuff for us. Like I want to add a title. We have a lot of distributed publishers that do supplemental marketing because they're handling sales, um, their distributors handling sales, but they're maybe not doing quite as much marketing for them. So they might want to like still book some ads or like do review copies on their own to get that out there. And a lot of times distributors will recommend review copies too, because it helps their sales reps in their sales practices to be able to like share with a store, Hey, check out this review copy of this title, et cetera. Yeah. And on that note, you know, I know that there are a lot of people on here. They're like, Oh, it's difficult to get a distributor. And it absolutely is. Um, yeah. And that, you know, Edelweiss, the cost, um, is kind of more on the higher end of things. You know, something I'll say is, you know, IBPA is aware, like Edelweiss is an incredibly important tool. And so we are talking with Allison. Um, we want to make uh, Edelweiss accessible to all of our members, regardless if you don't have the means necessarily or if you don't have distribution. So um, we're talking with Allison and her team about, well, how can we make that happen? Um, we haven't, um, you know, we, we have nothing that right now we're like, and this is our big reveal. Um, but I can tell you that we are absolutely aware of it. And we want to make sure that more of our independent publisher members can access this incredibly helpful tool. Um, I just want to make sure people that are watching this understand that we, we hear your frustration to not have access to such an amazing tool and we're working on it. Yeah. And I, I, and I hope that came across in like explaining of all of this, if just like, um, I, we really want to make sure like that you're getting, that it's the right fit for you if you're signing up for something. So that's what I was trying to make sure you had here was like some tools of like a understanding kind of how Edelweiss works, but also like knowing that there's various ways for you to engage with it. If you're like, you know, I'm not doing, I don't have the bandwidth to do a lot of direct sales to these stores, et cetera, like a catalog subscription may not be the greatest thing for me, but like, I do want to grow my marketing list. So like review copies might be a nice fit, um, that way slash, like I'm trying to get reviews and get my title out there. Um, you know, I think review copies in advertising can be a better fit. Um, and I also know those can be expensive for different reasons too. So I think just always, um, just a shout out to actually to Shana that's here too, that handles a lot of our inquiries that come in. Like we're happy to like explain to us your situation and we can always try and help with like, what's maybe the best fit for you too. Yeah. And there's, uh, Shana, I don't know if there's other questions I've seen coming in, if you wanted to share any of those for the video so we can record the answers. Sure. Um, Allison, I don't know if you know about this one. Someone says they're publishing on Amazon and will that work with the book distributors and librarians? Um, I, 
I'm not super familiar with like how the publishing on Amazon works, but I think it's kind of similar to Ingram Spark in that like you can um, get published through there, but that they are maybe like, I think they do different levels depending on what you pay for of like marketing services for you, et cetera. So really just, um, yes, like that is fine. I do think Amazon in general, like bookstores and Amazon are always like kind of two different worlds a little bit. So that's also just as a small press, like something to always keep in mind is like where your priorities lie as far as like, you know, maybe this year you're focusing on getting titles out via Amazon because that works better for you, but you really want to get into the bookseller market, right? Booksellers are not going to buy through Amazon. No, they would have to, you'd have to be able to buy them, buy more directly um, through you. Sorry. Um, this might be a good one for the video real quick. Um, is yeah. Barnes & Noble on Edelweiss or is it only smaller independent bookstores? And yes, Barnes & Noble is on Edelweiss. Yes, they are. And actually, we've been working pretty closely with them um, a lot over the past years. They, we have like a whole kind of, they've given us how they prefer to be sell, sold to and et cetera. And we always share that as part of like your onboarding. Um, we've got specific help docs on working with Barnes & Noble. One last one. Um, are there merchandise items on the platform as well? Shana, do you want to take that? We just talked about <laughs> yeah, that. we just talked about this. <laughs> yes. yes, we have some publishers who are just sidelines publishers. So, you know, just selling pins or calendars or anything like that. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's really anything you want to like be able to take an order um, from your account on, you can include. Well, we are so grateful to everybody who came here to ask questions. Um, Allison, Shana, again, I can't tell you how much we appreciate uh, the discount that you give for IBPA members, um, giving them access to this tool. Um, and uh, again, we will send this recording and all the slides to everybody who watched. Um, anything you want to add? One last thing, Allison, Shana, about how amazing Edelweiss is. No, just thank you for having us. And I threw my email up there too. So truly feel free to ask us any questions. I think um, navigating this world as a smaller publisher is very difficult. And I think um, Edelweiss is one tool in a million. So happy to help you get like the right answers to your questions um, anytime we can. So feel free to reach out. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. We really appreciate it. And we hope you'll take advantage of the Edelweiss member benefit. Yeah, thank you, guys.